Hey guys, David here from Google 5 Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install Arch Linux onto your computer. Okay, so let's get started. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install Arch Linux onto your computer. The reason I'm making this tutorial is because I've seen a lot of other tutorials on YouTube, but the people doing them overcomplicate the process, and a lot of them are very hard to follow. So my goal here is to make this the simplest tutorial and easiest to understand. I'm going to be explaining what each command is doing so that you guys are actually going to have a better understanding of what's actually going on. Okay, so if you haven't already, you're going to want to go ahead and download the Arch Linux ISO image and you're going to want to burn it to a disk or a USB drive. Next, you're going to want to boot up the computer from the media and you should be greeted with this screen here. Now, if you're running a 64-bit system, you should also have the option to boot Arch Linux in 64-bit mode. However, I'm doing this in VirtualBox, so I only have the 32-bit mode. It's up to you which one you choose if you're on a 64-bit system, but I'm just going to go ahead and choose the 32-bit option, and it's going to start booting into the Arch Linux ISO image. Okay, so once it's done booting, you can see here that it is automatically logged in as root. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we are going to be partitioning the hard drive. In order to see what the name of your disk drive is, you're going to want to run F disk space dash L. This is using the dash L flag on the fdisk command to see the list of the disks in the system. Now you can see here that it has detected two disks, one that is 30 gigs and one that is 1.4 gigs. The one that's 1.4 gigs is actually the Arch Linux image that we are running. So I'm going to be installing it to the 30 gig drive. So once you get the name of your disk drive, so in this case, slash DV slash SDA, you're going to want to go ahead and run CF disk. Now CF disk is a partition manager and we are going to be using this on the slash dev slash sda disk in my case and most likely your case too. So once you have that all typed in, hit enter and it will go ahead and open up the utility. It'll also show you your partition. So for now you can see that I have two partitions. I have a swap partition and an extension for file system partition. It's up to you how you partition your drive. However, I'm going to be assuming that you want Arch Linux as the only OS on your computer. In that case, you're gonna to wanna to delete all the partitions on the drive by selecting them and down here, just hitting delete. You should see now that there's only free space. The next thing that I'm going to do is create a swap partition. I like to create the swap partition before I create other partitions because we could designate how much space we want for swap and then use the remaining for other partitions. Those of you who don't know, swap in Linux is used like RAM. People have all sorts of different opinions on how big a swap partition should be. However, I think it should be about half of your RAM. So in this case, in this virtual machine here, I have it set to one gig of RAM. So I'm going to make the swap partition 520 12 megabytes. So to create your swap partition, you're going to want to hit new. You can make that a primary partition and it's going to ask you for the size in megabytes. I'm just going to type in 512 and I'm going to hit enter. It's going to ask whether you want to add it to the beginning or the end of the free space. I'm just going to go ahead and hit end because our other partitions will be at the beginning. And you could see that we have created the new partition there. Now this part of the video is where a lot of controversy comes in. Some people like to have a separate home partition and a separate var partition and a separate root partition. I for one prefer just to have one root partition with everything on it. A lot of people will disagree with me in that aspect, however I find it easier to manage when all of your files are in one location. So that's what I'm going to be doing here, and that's what I recommend that you do. So again, hit new from the free space, primary, and I'm just going to make that the rest of the space. So it's already selected there, so hit enter. And you're going to want to mark your root partition as bootable because we're going to be installing the bootloader onto this partition. So with the root partition selected, just Hit enter on bootable, and you should see that it now has a boot flag. So this is how I want to partition my drive. One swap partition, one root partition. The last thing that we're going to do in here is mark the swap drive for swap. Go ahead and select our swap partition. Go over to type. Hit enter. And you're just going to want to type in 82 for the file system type. This just marks the drive as a swap drive. Once you've gone ahead and done all that and you're happy with the way that your drive is partitioned, you can go ahead and go to write. Hit enter. And make sure that you type in YES for yes. Hit enter, and you can see here that it has written the partition table to the disk. Take note of the drive name, so in my case, the swap drive is SDA1, and my root drive is SDA2. Now we can leave CF disk, and the next thing that we're going to do is format the root drive with the extension for file system. So in order to do this, we're going to run mkfs.ext4, 
This is telling it to format with the extension for file system, space. And now we need to tell it which partition to format. So this is going to be the root partition. So slash dev slash sda2 and hit enter. And that took a couple seconds there, but it has now formatted the partition with the extension for file system. Okay, now we need to mount the root drive to the slash mnt or slash mount directory. So we can access the root drive from the slash mnt directory. So in order to do this, what you need to do is type in mount space slash dev slash sda2 in my case because that's the name of my root drive space slash mnt and this will mount the drive to the mnt folder okay so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to utilize the swap space for this installation so the first thing that we need to do is we need to make a swap file on the swap partition so in order to do that all you need to do is type in mkswap make swap space and then the name of your swap partition so in my case that was sda1 so i'm going to type in slash dev slash sda1 and hit enter and it has gone ahead and made the swap file on that partition now we want to utilize the swap so we're going to type in swap on space and then again our drive so slash dev slash sda1 hit enter and now it should be utilizing the swap Okay, so now what we're going to want to do is we're actually going to want to go ahead and install the system to the root drive. So in order to do this, you are going to need an internet connection. If you're on a wired connection that utilizes DHCP, you should already be connected to the internet. You can set up a Wi-Fi connection by running the command Wi-Fi-menu. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and install the base system to the root drive. So in order to do this, we are going to be using Pacman. So you're going to want to type in pack strap space slash MNT. So we're putting this onto the root drive, space, base, space, base, dash, devel. What this is doing is it's installing the base system and also the development libraries for the base system, just in case some packages need that as a dependency. Once you've done that, you're going to want to go ahead and hit enter. And this part can take a while. In my case, it takes about 20 minutes, but it can vary depending on the speed of your internet connection. So I'll just come back when this is done. Okay, so that actually went faster than I expected. In total, it took 6 minutes and 13 seconds. So as long as you didn't get any errors there, you should now have the base system installed onto your root partition. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to chroot into the partition. So we can just set a few things up before we actually restart into the actual system itself. So in order to do this, what you're going to need to do is type in arch dash chroot space slash mnt this is giving us full access to the system itself first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go ahead and create a new root password for the root user so passwd and hit enter and you can enter in a new root password so the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to set up some of the location stuff so we're going to want to edit the locale.gen file so in order to do this we're just going to use the nano text editor so nano space slash etc slash locale dot gen and you're going to want to find your language so they don't have Canadian English so I'm just going to select US English which is the closest thing and you're going to want to remove the hashtags or pound signs whatever you want to call them in front of all the options pertaining to the language that you've selected once you've done this you're going to want to hit Control O. It'll ask you if you want to write the file, just hit enter. And it'll write the file. Again, hit Control X, and this will exit the nano editor. We're going to want to create the locale file, so just type in locale gen, and it'll go ahead and generate your locales. Okay, so next we need to specify a time zone. So in order to do this, we're going to want to CD into the time zone directory so that we could see all the time zone configurations available. So to do this, I'm just going to type in CD space slash USR slash share slash zone info. And you're going to want to type in LS to see all the files in that directory. Okay, and here are all the folders in that directory. So after seeing the one that pertains to where you are, you're going to want to CD into that directory itself so for me that is canada and you're just going to want to type in ls again to see all the options and these are the actual files here so now in order to set that as your time zone type ln space dash s space the directory of the file so slash usr slash share slash zone info slash in my case canada and again in my case slash eastern 
hit space, type in slash etc slash local time. And that'll just set the time zone. Next, you can set a host name for the system. So echo space, I'm just going to name mine vbox space, a greater than sign space slash etc slash host name. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and install a bootloader. In this tutorial, I'm going to be installing Grub since it is the most popular bootloader. However, you can install any bootloader that you would like. So again, we need to download Grub from the internet. So type in pacman space dash capital S space grub dash BIOS. Hit enter. And it'll ask you if you want to proceed with the installation. Type in Y. And it'll go ahead and download the files needed in order to install the Grub bootloader. Okay, now we want to install Grub to our hard drive. So in order to do that, just type in grub dash install space slash dev slash the name of your hard drive not the partitions the actual hard drive itself so in my case that is sda and hit enter and as long as there are no errors you should have just successfully installed grub to your hard drive okay so now we're just going to generate an init file which grub is going to use to load linux an init file just basically stores information about your hardware so in order to do that we're going to type in mkinit cpio dash p dash linux and it's just going to start generating the file based on your hardware. Okay, so once it's gone ahead and successfully generated the image, we are just going to create the grub configuration file. So in order to do that, we're just going to type in grub dash mk config space dash o space slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg. And this will just generate the file. Okay, now we can exit our ch root session. And there's just going to be one last thing that we have to do before we can reboot into the Arch Linux system. We're going to have to generate an fstab file based on our hard drive. An fstab file just basically contains information about the partitions in a system. So in order to do that, type in gen fstab space slash mnt space two greater than signs slash mnt slash etc slash fstab. And that just went ahead and wrote the fstab file. So now we're actually done installing Arch Linux. So I'm just going to go ahead and unmount the root device by typing in umount space slash mnt. And that'll unmount the drive. And now we can reboot our system. And you're going to want to make sure that the installation media is out of the drive when you've gone ahead and restarted. And you should be greeted with your bootloader where you can load up your Arch Linux installation. So now I'm booted into the Arch Linux system. So I'm just going to log in with root and with the password that we made earlier. And now you can see that the Arch Linux system is up and running. So thanks for watching and I hope I helped. If you liked this video, don't forget to click the like button down below. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more. And also don't forget to check out my Facebook and Twitter page. Also don't forget to check out my website at www.kugudu55techtutorials.com. All the links are in the description below.